Uh, here we're going to be working on a Nintendo Switch that came in for no power. Now, Big Boss said that when you plug the cable in, we do see power. It does power on when you have the cable plugged in right here. So that tells me that the motherboard is working. But if you press the power button, nothing happens. So it's likely a problem with how the motherboard communicates with the button because Big Boss replaced the power flex cable and it's still the same issue. You press on the power button and nothing happens. The first thing I want to do is disconnect the battery. We do not want any power on to this board. Battery disconnected. Hello, hello, how are you? Let me check and see if there was any work done onto that board. Look at the USB-C connector. And yes, work was done on this board. This console was sent here for the power button fix. We're not touching anything else on this board. And I do not care what was done on this board as long as we can get the power switch to work. That's why this console came here. If we check the power flex connector, it should be located somewhere right over here. Right over here. That's it, right here. I do not see any rip in the flex cable and Big Boss replaced this cable anyway. He tried on the cable and power button is still not working. The connector itself I do not see anything wrong with the connector. Pins are solid. The latch is present. A bit loose, but it's there. Once the cable goes in, then this will get tight when pushed down. Check neighboring components, make sure nothing is missing. And I do see something missing if I'm not wrong, right here. It looks like there was a component here, probably a filter or a resistor, unless this is empty by default. We do not know. I'm going to check a donor board and see. Oh, and look at this. We have a missing component here too. So we do not know if those two components are empty by default or if there should be two components here. If they are missing, that's probably what's causing the problem. Okay, let's check this donor board here. And yeah, look at that. We should have two components here. Look at that. Two components are missing. Why are they missing from this side of the board? I do not know, unless there was work done to that side of the board, but no signs of flux on this area of the board. If this was changed, you would see flux here. But we have two missing components here. Anything else? That's it. That's it. We're going to have to prep the board by applying solder onto those pads. And now let's start by taking one of the components of the donor board. It's going to go right over here. The reason I'm using a soldering iron and not hot air or hot tweezers is because I do not want to touch or hit any of those connectors by mistake. We do not want to melt the plastic on either one of those two connectors, we are surrounded by plastic. And this area is very tight. Under the microscope, it looks like we have a lot of room, but it's a very tight area, so we want to do it as safe as possible. I do not want to have to change this connector or change this connector. Okay, the component is solid. Let me clean up quick. And now we're going to do the second one.
she wants to transfer data. What was the cost again? From like her old ten year old MacBook to uh, to a new computer that she's gonna buy. Okay, so I just want to go over this one one more time. Okay, so let's try to plug this cable in. connect the battery. If it turns on, it means the power button is working. Okay. It turned on, so button is working. Button is working. So we replaced the components while the board was still in. We did not have to remove the board. And look at this. Let's try the power button. On. I mean off. On. Awesome, awesome. Power button is working. I'm going to give it to Big Boss to reassemble and move on to the next device. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And we'll do something else in the next video.